Hello everyone, this is Changiz Geula from the Mesulam Center. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I'm glad to take you through a virtual tour of our center's brain bank and the neuropathology core. As you know, the Mesulam Center for Cognitive Neurology and Alzheimer's Disease is charged with uh, enrolling and following a large cohort of individuals who are either normal or who are suffering from different types of dementia and the individuals are enrolled and followed longitudinally with a variety of clinical tests, imaging. So there's a very rich data set uh, that we have for each of these individual participants in our studies. And then most of these individuals are also enrolled in what is called the brain donation program. And this program uh, allows for individuals to choose to donate their brain after they pass on for scientific studies. And most of the participants actually have enrolled in this brain donation program. So we receive a uh, large numbers of brains from individuals who are either normal or who have suffered from different kinds of dementia. And this allows us to do a numerous uh, experimental studies aimed at detecting the factors physiologically and in the brain that contribute to the cognitive abnormalities that we see in dementia or even uh, related to age-related cognitive slowing. So the brains then come uh, to the mesolum center after they are autopsied and they are processed. So many of these brains uh, are placed in a chemical that uh, you know as formalin or derivatives of formalin uh, that hardens the tissue and allows us to cut the tissue, put it on slides, stain it so that we can see the normal construction of the brain, how many cells are there, the nerve cell processes we can observe, but as well pathological inclusions, things that shouldn't be there but are in the brain. And that's how actually in terms of dementias, we can diagnose dementia. As you know, clinical uh, diagnosis of dementia is based on presentation of uh, cognitive abnormalities. But the definitive diagnosis is looking at the brain and seeing what types of pathology are there. So Alzheimer's disease has a specific type of pathology then uh, frontotemporal dementia, which is another type of dementia, has its own type of pathology, and we can be uh, certain after we look at the brain and uh, cut sections and stain what type of uh, dementia the person was suffering from. So what I'm going to do is to show you a few uh, aspects of our brain bank and uh, what types of things we do. So when the brain comes to us, we actually take two types of samples. Some, we take samples from the brain and uh, save it fresh, meaning that we are not going to chemically treat it. What we do is we freeze these samples from the brain and then we keep them, store them at very, very low temperatures. This will prevent any type of reaction from taking place in these samples, so they're preserved for years and can be used in biochemical experiments. The rest of the brain we cut in uh, thin blocks and we place it in what we call a fixative, that formalin that we talked about. And uh, we then take them out of formalin and store them in a chemical that again allows us uh, to store them at a refrigerator type temperature for years and use them for experiments. I'm going to show you some examples of containers uh, in our brain bank that have the brains of individuals. Each container here uh, represents one participant who donated their brain to our brain bank. And we have many of these types of refrigerators that are filled with uh, brains. And I can show you one more perhaps. This is another uh, one of our refrigerators which has brain samples in it and 
These are newer samples. We actually have what we call a cold room. It's an entire room, which is like a refrigerator. And when we go in there, we have our older samples. Our center has been in existence for over 25 years. And you can imagine how many uh, brains have been collected. Uh, the number of autopsies now is close to 500. And uh, the brains that we have are uh, very large in number, but also they are used in experiments. So some of the older brains have been uh, exhausted uh, and newer ones are still uh, available for many experimental works. And I want to show you also where we keep these frozen samples of the brain. This is an example of the type of freezer in which we uh, keep these frozen samples. As you can see, the temperature is minus 80 Celsius, which is uh, below minus 100 Fahrenheit. Very, very low temperature, so no reaction can take place and the brains are completely preserved. In addition to uh, brain material, we also collect blood from most of our participants and the blood is then processed so that we can have different components from the blood. For example, we save plasma for experiments that want to look at components of blood, how they change in diseases of the brain. We extract DNA so that we can do genetic studies and we extract other cells, for, for example, immune cells from the blood. And all of these are also frozen and stored at these very low temperatures until they're used by experimenters. So the purpose of uh, our center, along with many other Alzheimer's disease centers around the country, is to be able to provide investigators, both locally at the Messalum Center, uh, at other laboratories in universities in Chicago, and then nationally throughout the country, as well as internationally with samples of brain, blood, DNA that can be used in experimental work. So individuals who are researchers across the world essentially can request tissue or other materials from our brain bank, and if approved, then they can obtain those and use them in their experiments. Uh, what I want to do is very briefly show you what happens to the uh, brains that are put in formalin uh, and how we use them to actually diagnose pathologically what the uh, individual suffered from. We actually have a neuropathologist at our center who helps with this process. So very small samples of the uh, brains in those containers that I showed you previously are placed in paraffin, which is essentially wax. Uh, so this is an example of a paraffin embedded piece of brain. The dark in the center is the brain and then it's embedded in paraffin. And then this whole block of brain in paraffin is placed uh, in this instrument and uh, there is a blade underneath that keeps coming up and going down and as it does so it the sample moves forward so that it can cut a very thin section from this part of the brain the section is then placed on slides such as this one what you see at the center of this slide is a section of a brain then these brains are, these uh, sections of brain are stained to visualize various elements. We can visualize nerve cells, other cells in the nervous system that are uh, supportive cells or are part of the immune reaction. We can look at those pathological uh, inclusions that we were talking about, the pathology of Alzheimer's disease and uh, all other types of uh, changes that have taken place in the brain by staining for various elements. 
and our neuropathologist then looks at these uh, brains and uh, or slides rather from each brain and makes a pathological diagnosis that yes this person suffered from Alzheimer's disease this person is had a normal brain and this other person suffered from for example frontotemporal dementia and that is how uh, we use these brains to diagnose and then once the diagnosis is made the brain is banked and uh, we have a really very rich uh, data set from each participant in our center which includes clinical tests, neuroimaging, uh, the brain and other material that is in our bank as well as uh, longitudinal clinical data which is very significant that these individuals come back for visits and they are longitudinally followed so we actually know how things change during their uh, follow-up uh, so in summary this is a um, synopsis of what we do at the Mesolem Center Brain Bank we bank brain and other materials for other researchers to use in their experiments, really all of which is aimed at finding, uh, eventually finding a cure or a preventative treatment that can stop these dementias from advancing. Thank you very much and uh, I appreciate your attention.